So, Laura Mulling, go for it. Thank you. Well, I haven't always been at a telco. Um, I've recently moved to the dark side about that two years ago. An apology. <laughs> well, I'm starting with an apology, but I am going to tell you that apparently in a former life, uh, I did write shell scripts because I'm an electronic uh, fan. So, that being said, um, so how telcos got API religion? It's a really interesting story. We're gonna we're gonna walk through it. So, of course, there's a beer analogy. Has to be right. That's why we're all here. So. Just like beer, <laughs> the telco industry <laughs> is, is probably about as old as beer. Um, well, maybe beer's a little bit older. Um, but there is a direct correlation in terms of how we've gone from sort of uh, craft beers to sort of pure beers. Well, we'll start pure beers to sort of uh, a, a chain up to commoditize to back to craft. And we can look at that in the telco space as well and talk about where that's going and what it means for developers. So, as I said, if you think about it, think about beers, right? They started out pure, monks made the beers, right? Nice little backroom uh, project. Um, then it became commoditized. Everybody liked it, so hey, let's commoditize it. Um, then, now what you're seeing is a resurgence sort of of sort of the, the, the non-corporates, the, uh, the craft beers. There's some interesting stats that came out in the Wall Street Journal, actually, just, just between Christmas and New Year. Um, we'll use the U.S. as an example. The U.S. today has 1,700 craft brewers, and there are another 1,000 in the pipeline for funding. So there are another 1,000 underway. I think it's pretty amazing to look at those stats. So also, if you think about um, craft brews, so versus sort of the, the big brews, um, the, the, the Anheuser-Busch's of the world make up about 75% uh, of the total market in the US. Now, that being said, while the beer market is declining overall, so the number of barrels being produced is decreasing, for the craft brews, it's increased 14% year over year. Pretty interesting numbers. Now, what that really means is you've got the Silicon Valley, so to speak, of craft brews happening, right? This is uh, a founder of uh, Sam Adams talking here, saying, you know what? Craft brews, brewery, now about Silicon Valley, much like the Renaissance in Florence. So let's talk about how this applies to telcos. So if you think about it, telcos started out very pure, right? It was about voice. It was about making a phone call. Hey, how are you? Let's meet for dinner, right? Very pure, all about voice. Well, then the intertubes happened. And what did you have from the intertubes? You now had data. So it created a bit of a, an interesting role for telcos. So they're like, well, let's see, this voice thing was important. It's still kind of important. But now this data thing is really important. Hmm, what does that mean for us? Well, then it kind of went back to being about voice. So the big push for wireless. So it kind of went from web, it went from uh, wireline to wireline being the web, to then wireless. And then, of course, wireless moved to well, it's wireless, but it's not about voice anymore. It's about the data. How many of you saw the Wall Street Journal article, gosh, it was probably eight months or so ago now, that said, uh, don't call me and I won't call you? Anybody see that article? It talked about how people now, you text someone before you call them, right? Can you talk? <laughs> Are you free, right? You IM them, hey, when can you talk, right? Or you do everything via IM and texting. You don't actually pick up the phone and call them. So voice is kind of going away. And again, the carriers are like, whoa, what do we do with that? Well, think about the next step where everything's going to be all about connected devices. So by the year 2020, we're expecting 50 billion connected devices. And what that means is actually the phone goes away. Talk about really scary, right? The phone goes away and so now everything that you do, both data and voice, happens on other devices. Well. What's happened over the years is much like big breweries, telcos have kind of become commoditized, right? So it's, hey, I've got this data package, you've got that data package, but we all have the same set of services. And so it's, it's really just a big commoditized business that has no real sort of innovation happening in it, right? Well, that actually gave up an opportunity to craft telcos. A great example of craft telcos is Twilio. I think of Twilio as a craft telco, why? It's a couple of things, right? It's how they're building it. Does Twilio actually walk around with a bunch of hardware? Do they sell hardware? No. They have software and APIs. Their business is a purely API-based business. 
The other thing that they've done that's really changed it and made it sort of an interesting model is the business model. So while as much as we think maybe the fact that it's all software-based might scare the industry, it's actually the business model that Twilio is working on that scares the industry. It has nothing to do, well, maybe a little bit to do with hardware versus software. So you have this notion of, of craft telcos. Well, if you think back over the last couple of years, much like the large brewers are now acquiring folks like Goose Island, right? They're acquiring the crafts. They're like, oh, maybe I need to play in this space. Maybe there's something I should do. Maybe I should have this API thing. I don't really know how it works, but, but maybe I should have that because people seem interested in it. So what we've seen over the years are companies like Jaja being acquired by Telefonica, right? Or Ribbit being acquired by BT or Skype being acquired by Microsoft, right? So you're seeing this kind of transition to, hey, I need to be in that space. How do I get there, right? Kind of interesting change. Well, in that same way that you see that, that change happening, what they're really trying to do is get, I'll call it API religion, right? Because those businesses, if you think of Jaja and you think of, of Twilio and you think of BT, i.e., well, I'll call it Ribbit, um, they're all based on APIs and they're all kind of software-based implementation models. So there are some things that are happening in the industry. So much like you have the building and creation of beer, right, how you make beer, you have the building of a, of a telco, and you have the building of what is the next generation of a telco, and how you build it around serving sort of the developer ecosystem and really building it out in terms of, of, uh, of creating people that, that make a craft out of it. So, it, and I like to think about this, I was at a, um, uh, an event a couple weeks ago, uh, weekends ago, called The Sandbox. It's a group of uh, entrepreneurs between 20 and 30 years old. And these entrepreneurs all kind of got together, and um, there's a couple hundred of them, but there's about 700 worldwide. And one of the topics that we talked about was, well, what happens in 50 years when the world's run by machines, right? And it came down to, it's all about the artisans, right? So think about that. In about 30 years, it's all going to be about being about the craft. So think about how we get from where we are with beer to telcos. There's kind of three big categories of things. There's the infrastructure, right? So the things that you need, the tools you need to, to build out the beer. Um, then there's the ingredients. And I like to look at the ingredients as being culture, right? Because you really can't make change without culture impact. And the people uh, are what make it. And then lastly is the basic business process. Or in this case, we'll refer to it kind of as the, the business models. So let's walk through each of these and what they mean in the telco world. So if I think about Twilio over here on the uh, left-hand side, and I think about maybe, I don't know, I'll say some big tier one telco on the right-hand side. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen this before, but this is sort of the thought process. Right? So Twilio might go, hey, I'm a dude. I'm going to have a beer. I'm going to get a chick. I'm going to take her to bed. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? Now. I'm pick your telco, I'm the chick, I'm going to have a cocktail, I might pick up a dude, we're going to go to bed, but man, I might get my heart broken, maybe we're going to ride off into the sunset, maybe we're going to get some action again, right? So it's a much more complicated scheme of thought processes versus, hey, I want a beer, I'm going to get a chick, I'm going to bed, right? So think about the two. It really does look like that. Now, if you're really compared sort of the right-hand side to a real telco network, it really kind of looks like that. It is pretty complex and ugly. That's what it looks like today. So let's think about where this goes tomorrow. This is not your Ma's Bell, right? This is a little bit more uh, what we might look at as like a software stack-based uh, diagram of the network moving forward. So as you think about the network moving forward, yeah, the little antennas on top of your tower is not going to go away. But the reality is the infrastructure. Remember craft beer, infrastructure, people, and, and business models or business process? The infrastructure becomes all software-based. Um, we've actually been working with, uh, with a lot of service providers on something called the virtual telco, which is really about a cloud-based platform. So imagine tying the capabilities of the network with cloud infrastructure, right? So if you could dynamically give someone uh, bandwidth, right? So some of the things that happen with your cloud infrastructure is you need to ensure uptime, you need to ensure availability, maybe you want to ensure bandwidth um, for uh, video content and things like that. Combining network services with cloud infrastructure, and then making the entire so um, stack of the network all software. 
So as Alcatel Lucent, we sell hardware. We sell big giant boxes, right? I, I know how to sell you this. I don't know how to sell this nebulous thing called an API. This is where it's going. So many, uh, this is the first step in API religion for telcos. Um, I don't know if any of you heard, um, uh, what was it, about two weeks ago, AT&T announced that they had joined OpenStack. They are actually contributing code back to OpenStack. I think that's a pretty huge feat uh, in the telco industry, and it's step one to prove that they're moving towards religion. That same conference was really interesting because I attended it last year. Yes, two years in a row, AT&T Developer Conference. However, last year, um, it was a bunch of people in suits. You couldn't spot a developer anywhere near that conference. I was like, I went to one of the executives afterwards and I said, you realize there's like no developers in the audience? They're like, yeah. I'm like, so why do you call it a developer conference? Well, we want them here. <laughs> okay, it's a good step in our direction. This year, completely different, right? The day before the conference, hackathon, right? Hackathon for using network services plus other services uh, that you could find, you know, choose programmable web, choose your, choose your API. Build some really cool apps, we'll come in and give prize money. And oh, by the way, the, the amazing prize that they did is the prize that every developer wants. You know what it was? Not you get to be in our app store, you get to be in an advertisement on television. That is amazing. Talk about the best branding and marketing scheme ever. It's fantastic. So a bunch of developers got there, right? They attended it. There were people there. Of course, there were still people in suits, like myself. Um, so we were hanging out there. But the next day, the developers didn't quite make it the next day to the conference. They attended the hackathon, but not all of them went the next day. But the interesting part there, again, culture change, from uh, Ralph, uh, De La Vega, who is their head of consumer and now head of wireless strategy, from him to the CMO to the CTO for literally six hours, all I talked about was APIs. Oh my gosh, I was in heaven. It was like a year ago, all I talked about was devices. This year, all I talked about was APIs and all the services that they were going to offer through, um, through APIs. So I think they've got culture, they're working on the religion. The last part that really scares them is the business models, right? The business model. Their business model today is what? It's all about the data plan. It's all about the data plan. What's Twilio's business model? Is it about the data plan? Nope, right? It's not about buy a big data plan for me, right? <laughs> it's about buying a service. It's about a call. It's about a transaction. Um, same thing with most other APIs. There's like 27 different business models for APIs out there. Program Web's kind of mapped them all out. I don't know if you've ever seen John Musser's uh, chart. There's about 27 different business models. This takes me to a few predictions about the future of the TOCO, which I thought you might find interesting. In the future, the data plan dies. Think about it. LTE kind of unlimited bandwidth, not necessarily unlimited spectrum, but a limited bandwidth, right? And you've already got people talking about 5G, kind of interesting. So at some point, you have how many devices? How many of you have three devices? How many of you have four devices? Five? Over 10. <laughs> so think about connecting all of those. You probably want the same data plan, right? But then why pay for a data plan? So in the future, so this got asked to me at CES on a, on a panel about 4G, what will the business model be in the future? How will telcos make money? You can't just keep increasing the data plan. At some point, it kind of levels out where your willing to, willingness to pay just says, I'm done, right? So how, where's the money going to come from? It's going to come from the services, i.e. the APIs, and accessing the services, features, data, and functionality from the network via APIs. It will not be about the data plan, right? You just can't keep increasing the data plan. Prediction one. Prediction two, emerging markets will rule. So right now we're working on a project uh, in Asia. Um, and this project in Asia is a greenfield LTE network that when it launches in a few months will be entirely API based. That is the only way that they're launching the infrastructure. Um, we're at the core of, of that. Our, our platform is one that's exposing all those network services, everything from how they do video conferencing and voice uh, to things like uh, uh, data access, transactions, information about subscribers, et cetera. It's all going to be API enabled out the door, right? So this is one example. There are tons of other, you know, 
uh, countries, I would say uh, when I look out there, you think countries like Nigeria. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but Nigeria is probably going to be the first one to really kind of have an impact and change this, the data plan dies model, right? So there's my prediction, Nigeria. All right, next. This one's the best one for last. Jeff Lawson becomes the CEO of AT&T. That's my last prediction. Why? Because the model has to change. The things that folks like uh, Jeff are doing and companies like Twilio, they're impacting this industry and that is the industry has to change. We have to become about software, right? We have to become about APIs. We have to be about changing flexible business models. So I predict that Jeff Lawson will eventually become the CEO of AT&T. Thank you. Enjoy.